All right, guys, so let's go ahead and set up our database. Okay, so let me first show you guys a link that is uh, extremely useful. So according to Postgres, this is the official way to get the latest uh, build of Postgres on your Ubuntu system or, or any other uh, Linux system. So you have to add a file called pgdg.list to this folder here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we will go into cd etc apt sources.list.d. So here we're going to uh, add that line uh, to this file called pgdg.list. All right. Okay, now I'm just going to copy this line here and I'm going to paste it in here like that. So instead of using squeeze, so it, it really depends on which uh, distribution of Linux or Ubuntu you're using. We're using 12.04, which means ours is called precise. And my apologies, uh, I have a bit of a cold, so my spelling is not going to be that great today. Um, anyway. Yeah, so precise, we're good. Save that. All right, so once we've come out, we need to run this particular line to add this app key. So go ahead and run that. All right, says OK. So now we can CD back into our regular uh, home, repos uh, home folder. And we can now run sudo app get update. All right, so now it's going to register the new repository we added in for Postgres. And after that, we should be able to install it just fine. So sudo app get install. Postgres ql hyphen 9.3. Uh, so 9.3 is the current latest version of Postgres. Uh, I re highly recommend it. It has a lot of improvements over 9.2. I mean, in this case, you're setting up a new server anyway, so might as well use the latest one. Uh, the other module one install is Postgres uh, Contrib. So if you're not using HStore or any other fancy Postgres features, you might not need Contrib. But as a general rule, I always install Contrib anyway because most of the apps that I develop or build will use HStore in one way or the other. So yeah, and the other one we want to install is libpq-dev. So what libpq does is when you're installing the pq gem for Rails, uh, it's going to use this one to build a native C extension. So that's why we need the libpq dev. All right, do the hyphen Y and press enter and we're off. All right, so that looks like it has installed successfully. Uh, the server has started. So now we can actually log into our database and do stuff to it. So I'm just going to clear the screen here uh, and I'm going to log in. So sudo hyphen u uh, post grass and psql. OK, so now we need to first uh, create a user other than Postgres. So Postgres as a user, so when we do sudo hyphen u, that's setting the user who's going to log into PSQL. In this case, we're logging in as Postgres user. So before we do anything, we need to uh, create a user. So create user deployer. Uh, so generally, it's kind of okay i mean to just create a user called deployer for your database uh but it's it's an extra layer of security if your database user is not the same name as the person who logs in to your uh vm so in this case we could do something like underscore db user um i mean in case your system gets compromised it's a little bit more difficult for the hacker to you know to guess what the username of the database is uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess some people like this convention. Some people don't mind using just deployer. Um, 
I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I think if someone got hacked into your system in the first place, it's just a matter of time before they figure out what your actual user is, uh, you know. So the main thing here about security is going to be your database, right? Uh, is you going to be your, your password for your for your database? So just don't use like one two three five six seven eight for your database password. And uh, yeah, so that's I'm going to keep it as a deployer. Uh, I think that's fine. Uh, but you can call it something else. You can even suffix it with some random number. I don't know, whatever two one four eight. Whatever you think is going to be more secure and more difficult for the hacker, then just do that. Okay, so now we have a deployer user. And uh, one thing I'm going to do, which a lot of people might frown upon, is alter user deployer with super user. So um, we're granting super user rights to this deployer because in Rails, when you're running migration, you're adding extensions or whatever, adding features to your database, you might need the super users. For example, if you're installing an HStore extension from your Rails migration file, you're gonna need uh, super user uh, you know, authorization for your database user in order to use it. Uh, if you don't wanna all, uh, give your, uh, your user, your database user, the super user, uh, authorization uh, what you can do is you can manually add the extension in here uh, in your command uh, so uh, I'm not going to show you right now so let's let's first just go ahead and create our database so create database shopper production with owner deployer actually we forgot to do something we forgot to set the password uh, for a user. So let's do that. Uh, alter user deployer with password. So here is where you should not use a, you know, simple password like that. You know, this is going to be a pretty important security uh, part in your system. So use a strong password generator. And basically, uh, just copy the password, hint, save it somewhere, email it to yourself, or whatever. Um, so here, just be a little bit careful. So like, for example, 15, but with no punctuation. So only numbers and letters. Uh, this looks good. This will be just fine. So just paste that in there like that. And I'm going to copy this hint, and I'm going to store it somewhere safe. And... Yeah, and just all I have to do is just forget about it after that. That looks good. All right, so now we can actually create the database. Create database. Shopper production with owner. Deployer. All right, so now we have a database ready and uh, a user for that database and we also have a uh, you know everything is pretty much set up we have a user set up password set up and the database set up that's all we really need uh, and the user has all the right permissions obviously because we gave him super user um, if you want to learn more about how to like maneuver your way around the psql command line tool for postgres then i highly recommend uh, just searching the postgres documentation they have a pretty good documentation on how to like you know maneuver your way around um so with or without comments over here whichever you want and here i mean i know there's a lot of stuff here but it's pretty well documented i mean it's it's really cool you know i just search for some stuff and i'll usually find the answer in here so yeah that's pretty much all we need to do uh for postgres and setting all the database up so from here on out, we can even log in as a, so just do like a PSQL and database deployers. So if we just do like, for example, uh, so now we're logged in as our deployer user for our PSQL command line tool, and we're logged into the, the database. So right now we are looking at that particular database we just created. Um, yeah, so 
from here on out, we will actually do the all the manipulation of the database through our Rails migration. So yeah, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.